Is Christ at home in your heart? Do you struggle with the busyness of life and climb into bed at the end of the day with the guilt of not having spent enough time with God? Well, in today's video, we are talking about the three steps to making room for Jesus. Well, hey, my friend, in case we haven't met yet, my name is Chris Reese, and if you are looking to defeat life's devils, grow in your faith, and become everything you were created to be, go ahead and click that subscribe and notification button so you don't miss a thing. I love my home. It is a humble, tiny, two-bedroom townhome that my husband and I have worked very hard to make our own. And during the quarantine, we were like many who took the opportunity to do a little redecorating to make our home a more pleasant place to be. And my home has always been my sanctuary. And since I've worked, since I've always worked from my home office, we found it important to make it what we wanted it to be. But we also like to share it with others. And I have a confession to make. While most people scramble around to get ready for company, I scramble all the time to always be ready. <laughs> my motto is I want my house to be magazine ready at all times. Okay, I realize this is a little extreme, but it, it brings us joy and peace. And I'm always ready for company. Even when a guest comes over, just a few minor adjustments and voila, we've made room in our tiny home. But it got me thinking, my home is always ready for company, but is my heart always ready for Jesus? And if you are a born again believer, the question is not whether or not Christ lives in you. The question is, does he feel at home? And most sane people live their busy lives and don't worry about the messes until company comes. But unfortunately, many take that same approach when it comes to making room for Jesus. So let's talk today about the three steps to make room for Jesus. Step number one, clean up. 1 John 1, 9 reminds us that if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And just like we would do a thorough cleaning in our home if we were expecting an important guest, we must cleanse our hearts of all unrighteousness for Jesus to feel comfortable in our home. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I am not saying that we have to get our act together or Jesus won't live in our hearts. If you've invited him in, he is there to stay. But do we really want him in a dirty, sin-filled environment? And Jesus made it so simple for us to clean up, confess your sins, and he'll do the cleaning. <laughs> like any good guest, he will say, let me clean up. The question is, will you let him? Step number two. Straighten up. What's the first thing you do when the doorbell rings? You'll likely straighten up all the clutter that's lying around in your home. And very few people enjoy inviting others into a home filled with chaos and disorder. But essentially, that's what we do when we invite Jesus in, but we don't quiet the chaos and the clutter of our lives. We're so distracted by the busyness of our lives that we neglect our most important guest. And I used to have a terrible habit of running around, straightening up when guests would come over. Then I would run around some more serving them. I was a classic Martha. But when I took the time and employed the discipline to straighten up in advance, I was now able to focus my attention on my guests. And the same thing with Jesus. But I still need to remind myself at times of Jesus' words in Luke 10, 41. <laughs> Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. My friend, I hope you will join me in straightening up the clutter in our lives to make room for what's better. And step number three, open up. Have you ever watched those home makeover shows where they take an old rundown home and completely renovate it? They do everything from the foundation to the furnishings, and they are so proud when this project is complete. And they can't even wait to open the doors and invite in the homeowners. And we too should be excited to open up our hearts and make room for Jesus. And when we open up, when we invite him in and allow him to move freely throughout each room, go wherever you want, Jesus, that should be our motto. There is no room, no closet, no basement, nothing that is closed off to you. You see, when we open up our home to a guest, we would never think of inviting them in and then ignoring them. 
We would never think of telling them to go sit in the corner until we're ready to talk or talk to them for an obligatory five minutes in the morning. Instead, we offer food, conversation, thanks, and fellowship. And we often carry the unnecessary burden of sin. We live our lives for the wrong reasons and we keep others at a distance. And I realize that this is what the world teaches, but Jesus' desire is to take a permanent residence in our heart. He's knocking. Will you answer? Well, my friend, that's all the time that we have for today. Until next time, remember, all things are possible with God. Thank you for watching Christian Life TV. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, help us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and build believers all around the world. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly partner with Chris Reese Ministries by clicking on the donate link now.